I was able to get dramatically better results from Google's marketing mix model called Meridian. If you guys are new here, marketing mix models are hot for anything related to marketing and marketing data science because you're effectively trying to measure your ROI across a wide range of channels at once. So if you're working for a big company like an Apple or Samsung, you might be advertising on social media, on TV, on billboards, on Google, on YouTube. There's so many channels and it's really difficult to measure these simultaneously. And a marketing mix model is supposed to be able to do this, but it runs into trouble with real world data. And in previous videos, if you go back and look at my page, I first introduce what the Google's marketing mix model is. And then I show that if you don't really know what you're doing and you just feed it like data that is comparable to real world data with multicollinearity and with endogeneity, you can get disastrous results. But I'm going to show you here with a little bit better data that's a little bit more manageable and also with a little bit more insight into the priors that you're going to set you can actually get fantastic results so again what i do here is i simulate data i have these five channels search social display video and affiliates i'm not actually trying to get them to look like search or look like social it's just five channels But importantly, they're all going to trend together. So they all follow seasonality. So they're all going to peak at the same time and trough at the same time. That means they're going to be multi, there's going to be multi-collinearity between these channels. And the baseline bookings that we would get without any marketing is also going to trend based on the sine curve. And so there's going to be endogeneity in the fact that we will spend the most at exactly the time when the baseline demand is the most as well. But in this example, uh, baseline bookings make up about 20,000 bookings per period, but there's a total of 33,000 bookings per period. So the baseline in this example is about 60% of bookings. This is again, ground truth because we simulated the data and that's really important for testing these models. And here, if you look at the correlations, you see I just did a correlation matrix of everything. Here are the impressions. So you go down to the one and you can see that the channels, you know, have about 30 point, you know, 0.3, 0.4 correlation with each other across the different impressions, across the different channels. So it's not going to be like 0.99 correlation, but they definitely move together. And again, the ground truth is that video is going to make up the most incremental bookings, so 10% uh, of the total bookings. And then social is second with nine. Search is third with seven and a half. Display is fourth with six. And affiliates uh, is in last with five. And so if you add these up, it'll be about close to 40%. And baseline was 60%. So altogether, that's going to be 100% of your bookings. And I gave these various different uh, costs but you can see the ROI video has the highest ROI social search display and affiliates is last. And so now let's go and we fed this data into the model. Let's see how well it picks up the ROI. After we feed the data into Google's marketing mix model, this is what the output is going to look like. And I'm pretty surprised with how well it did. So first you can see the seasonality, right? Of the, this is the sign curve and the baseline bookings are here in the orange and then the marketing the total bookings are in blue and the green is actually right underneath it so the expected and the actual are almost right perfectly on top of each other and we see this in the model fit metrics where the r squared is 0.99 and the mape is just two percent so that's the mean average percent error is just two percent now check out this channel contribution it actually has 47 percent for baseline and 50 3% for all the marketing channels. But in reality, we knew the ground truth was 60% of baseline and 40% in the marketing channels. Now this is off, but it's, it's actually pretty reasonable that it's, it's a good split. It's saying it's about 50, 50 here. Ground truth was about 60, 40. This is not bad for a media mix model. And now look at what we see when it looks at the contributions of each one of these channels. So baseline 47% and then video of 14 social search display and affiliates. But if you remember, we know what the ground truth is, right? It was video had the most, then social, then search, then display, then affiliates. So it picks up 
perfectly the rank ordering of these five different channels in terms of their total contribution, the total number of incremental bookings that they, each channel was driving. And if we scroll down to ROI, we see the exact same thing that it has video at the top, then social, then search, then display, then affiliates. And this was exactly the rank ordering of the different channels. By the way, it happens here that the channels with the most incremental bookings also happen to have the highest ROI, but that does not have to be the case. You could imagine there could be a channel with relative, like middling ROI, but we just give a ton of spend and a ton of impressions to, and it could end up with the most incremental bookings, even though it doesn't have the high, highest ROI. So that just happens to be the case. So based on these values, Google then makes uh, optimiz optimization recommendations. In this case, <clears throat> it says that social and video should go from about 20% up to 26% each. So again, these are the top two channels and is making a recommendation that we can increase performance by shifting some of that spend from uh, into social and video and taking away from affiliates and display, which again, we know the ground truth were actually the worst ones. And based on Google's suggestions, without changing the budget at all, so in this case, 63 million, 63 million, the simple reallocation of dollars across from less efficient channels to more efficient channels would increase our revenue by $6 million. Now, consider you're a data scientist and you do one project and now through your recommendations, you have just increased revenue by $6 million at no additional cost. This is how you justify your salary. This is how you demonstrate impact.